So let's examine how a solvent can stabilize an SN1 reaction. So let's begin by recalling what the first step of our reaction is, known as the ionization step. In this step, we have our substrate dissociating to the following two products. So we have this bond between carbon and leaving group breaking, dissociating. This leaving group takes the two electrons and we form the following two products. So we go from a neutral reactant in which we have no net charge to the following two fully charged products. The carbyl cation with a positive charge on the carbon and our leaving group with a negative charge because it took those two electrons. So we also have a transition state. The transition state has a partial positive charge on the carbon and a partial negative charge on the leaving group. Why? Well, because in our transition state, our bond is beginning to break. It's dissociating. And as it's dissociating, this leaving group is taking those two electrons. So these two electrons are slowly approaching this atom, and so this atom becomes partially negative, while this carbon loses that electron, becoming partially positive. So we go from zero charge to a partial charge to a full charge. Now, once again, during ionization step, reactants with no charge transform into positively and negatively charged products. So what can we say about the interaction between a polar solvent and these charged species? Well, we can hypothesize that a protic polar solvent will stabilize the charged species via electrostatic interaction between the partial positive and partial negative charges of our solvent and products. So, a protic polar solvent is simply a solvent that is able to donate an H atom for hydrogen bonding and it can also form electrostatic differences in charge. So, the atoms on our solvent have different charges and we'll see what that means in just a second. Let's pick a polar solvent or a protic polar solvent. Let's say water, for example. And let's examine how exactly water stabilizes our products, our fully charged products. So let's take the carbocation and let's place it right here. This is our carbocation. This carbocation has a positive charge on the carbon. If we place water into the mixture with our carbocation, what we get is that water orients itself in a way to stabilize this full charge. In other words, notice that on the water we have two H atoms and we also have an oxygen. There's an electronegative difference between our oxygen and H and so the H is developed a partial positive charge and the O develops a partial negative charge. And this partially negative charge will uh, interact with the positive charge, stabilizing this molecule by decreasing this full charge. And we have three interactions here shown. There will be more interactions, but since this is a two-dimensional diagram, we have only three interactions here. And these interactions are very stabilizing. So our solvent, our polar solvent, acts to stabilize our products because our products have charges. Likewise, let's examine this leaving group. The leaving group has a negative charge. So now the oxygen will orient the H's because the H's have the partial positive charges. And so they will orient in a way to interact with the partial positive and negative to stabilize that negative charge. So this is stabilized and this is also stabilized. That's exactly why our products are stabilized. Now, this will also be stabilized because we have partial positive and partial negative charges. So not only will our products be stabilized by a polar protic solvent, but also this transition state will be stabilized. In fact, our neutral reactants will also be stabilized because there are electronegativity differences between, for example, this carbon and leaving group. But the stabilization will not be as much as in this case. In this case, because this has an overall charge of zero. Now, if instead we act, we add a nonpolar aprotic solvent or simply a nonpolar solvent, 
that nonpolar solvent will not stabilize these products and the transition state because there will be no charge, there will be no net charge, no polar moment on our nonpolar solvent. So if we use a polar, it will stabilize. If we use a nonpolar, it won't stabilize it, well, at least as much. So let's examine the following energy diagram. The y-axis is our energy. The higher we go, the more energy we have. The x-axis is our reaction progress. So as we go from left to right, we go from neutral reactants to fully charged products. This hump on top is our transition state. It's an energy maxima. We cannot isolate it, but we can examine it. So let's suppose we have the following two situations. In one beaker, we have one reaction taking place. In the second beaker, we have the same reaction taking place, but with a different uh, solvent. So in the first beaker, we use a nonpolar solvent, and we get the following black line. So our, uh, when we use a nonpolar solvent, our reactants start on this energy level, they go through this transition state, which has this energy level, and ends up on this product stage. Notice this is an endothermic reaction because our ionization step is an endothermic reaction. So now let's examine our polar solvent. Our polar solvent stabilizes all of these species, all of these molecules, but it stabilizes it in different ways. It stabilizes the neutral reactants less than it stabilizes the partial charge transition state, and it stabilizes the partial charge transition state less than it stabilizes the products. And we see that on this diagram. Notice the energy drop is less here than here, and it's less here than here. So the products are more stabilized than transition state, and transition state is more stabilized than our reactants. And that means that our overall uh, activation energy will be lowered, and so our reaction rate will increase. And in fact, at the same time, because the energy of our final products is lower, our equilibrium will also shift to this side, towards our product side, towards these intermediates with negative charges. So once again, Notice the transition state is stabilized more than the reactants. And this means that the energy of activation is lowered and thereby increases our rate of reaction. Also, the stabilization of the products leads to a shift in equilibrium towards our product. So because equilibrium is shift from reactants to products, that means we're going to produce more of these products. And because the activation energy is lowered by the polar solvent, not only will we produce more, we're also going to produce it much quicker at a higher rate because this activation is, is decreased. So if we look at the rate law for this reaction, what changes is the K, the constant K, will increase and increasing the rate of our reaction.